Nicolette Robinson is making her Broadway debut playing Jenna in the musical Waitress, becoming the first actress of color and real mom to take on the iconic role in the Sarah Bareilles hit. Hear the powerhouse performer talk about bouncing motherhood with the stage, dreaming up her casting before it seemed possible, and being part of a performing power couple with husband Leslie Odom Jr. on this week's Show People. Welcome, Nicolette. Thank you. Welcome to Broadway. Welcome oh to Show God. People. Welcome to Broadway.com. I'm just completely... Every, it's all happening. It's all happening and I can't even believe it. Being I'm... on Broadway was exciting, <laughs> but being in the white leather chair is a whole other level. Of full on dreams. <laughs> Checking all the boxes right now. How are you doing? How's life? I'm so good. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. Life is busy and exhausting, I'm but... Sure. but Really wonderful. I can't believe this is your first time on Broadway, first of all. When they announced <laughs> that you were going into the now iconic role of Jenna, this yes. is now a thing. It's a thing. I mean, I remember when Waitress opened, like, if anyone knew that it would become this, you know, Broadway landmark show, and, and now all the amazing actresses who've been able to take this on this part. Yeah. I mean, I've been a fan since yeah. they opened on Broadway, and... It sounds like you've actually been performing the role of Jenna at home. Oh, yeah. For years. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I was a little <laughs> kid, I used to be that kid that would just perform full Broadway cast albums in the living room. And cool. Well, we're going to do this that. This was like my on. version of <laughs> yeah, the gonna, adult version of We're going to pick one. That. We're going to do one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Completely. If you were going to perform like a musical right now, like in full and complete, like which one would be in your head other than Waitress? Ooh. Like which one? Like Once on this Island, oh, Drag I could, do, I could do all of Once on this Island. Oh, yeah. I could do all of Once on oh, this Island. Oh, completely. Yeah. I mean, if we're really throwing it back, we could do like Lion King or Gypsy wow. or like, I don't know. Wow. Some, those okay. were ones that you're real, like, were big ones as a kid for me. <laughs> uh-huh. So you're a real like Broadway girl. Oh yeah. Like you're you're for real. But but for like real. what I was saying was when they announced that this would be your Broadway debut, I thought, oh wow, well, it is her Broadway debut yeah. because you know, you've been on the Broadway scene yeah. as the the wife of a Tony winner, mm -hmm. as Adam Jr. We yes. you've been around a lot. You've oh, done yeah. Great work off Broadway. But but this is actually the Broadway debut. Yes. So does it feel like you reached a milestone when this oh, happened? Yeah. This this feels like, for sure, the biggest milestone of my career for myself. Every day I'm pinching myself. There's just something each day that I'm just like, I can't, can't believe that this is where we're at. <laughs> so not only are you new to Broadway, but you also yeah. are new to motherhood. Lucille is at home, right? Yeah. Of course, I love the name Lucille. Yes. Where did the name come from? We named Lucille after my grandmother, my mom's mom, who mm. is no longer with us, but she meant so much to me. And, um, and we also call her Lucy. For short. I love Lucy. Yeah. The show, and I love Lucy based on, I haven't met Lucy yet, but I love the photos of Lucy. She's adorable. Thank you. What, what is it like interacting with her oh. and balancing that with sort of the joy of doing, being a, in a Broadway show, but you have to sort of step to be away from her for time? Yeah, What's, what is all that It's challenging. Like? It's really challenging. I mean, this is like, this is the first full-time job I've had since I gave birth to her, since before, since I was pregnant with her. Yeah. And, um... I miss I miss her all the time, and I have to like see her in the morning, and then usually I'm off to go do you know something for the show, and then yeah. I miss bedtime, which is you know hard, yeah. except for on Monday nights um, and sometimes Wednesday nights. It's challenging, but it also feels like something I needed to do you know for myself. I f I feel like motherhood has taught me about discovering the balance of being with your child but also fulfilling that need that you have I think and I hope that eventually she's going to be she's going to see that I'm doing stuff that I really love to do mm -hmm. and hopefully that'll push her to do the things that she wants to so but yeah. she and she's been at the theater yeah she has What's she loves like? it she loves the theater she just like runs through all the seats she loves how soft the velvety seats Very feel soft, nice. and yep. I brought her just a couple days ago I was holding her on the stage and I was, we were looking out at the, the theater and I said, Mama stands here and then there's all these people that sit in the seats all over here and then Mama sings and they listen to Mama sing like, like when Mama sings to you at night, these people sit in the seats and then they listen to Mama yeah. sing and she just like was looking and taking it all and she's so smart, she really understands so much so she just, when we, she comes to the theater there's a giant 
<laughs> picture of me outside the door, and she goes, "Mama!" Oh. <laughs> and so Times it's Square and everywhere. Oh my You're god! On trash cans. Yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's very crazy. But she's like very. She recognizes that stuff, so it's it's really special. And she must be like, wow, all these people pay to come see Mama sing and I get free concerts. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, that's, I mean, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. She's been listening to me sing Waitress for since she was in my belly. So she's, yeah. this is nothing new for her. Yeah, so I was like, oh my God, what's it going to be like when Nicolette sings, you know, she used yeah. to be mine. And, and, and Lucy was like, oh, I know Been that. there, done that. I know that. I, I know it. I know that. I know it. She's going to be yeah. good. She's going to be good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. True. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk more about Lucy and Jenna and everyone. Yeah. We'll be right back with more Nicolette. <laughs> and we are back with Nicolette Robinson, currently starring in Waitress. And so people have, <laughs> have commented, also, you are the first actress who's an actual mother mm -hmm. to take on this role. And, yeah. and a lot of the show's about being pregnant and motherhood, and it, it, that's sort of a big, big portion, for sure. So it's interesting, though. You know, you you were fantastic in Brooklynite off-Broadway, which Thanks. I was hoping was going to come to Broadway. That, that was a great musical. You and Matt Doyle were in that. That was fun. Um, but you weren't a superhero, but you were able to do that. That's true. I, I was not a superhero <laughs> in real life. You are an actress. <laughs> so, it, you know, you are able to sort it of do things without experiencing them. It's possible. Superpowers, no. Um, <laughs> but now here, it seems like it adds actually a lot to oh, this yeah. experience and, and this story. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's, it's really cool. Obviously, we're actors and we yeah. pretend for a living, and so it's really okay to not be a mom and to, right. to be able to play a mother, but I don't think anything has changed me more than, mm -hmm. than the experience of going through this 10 months of carrying a human being and then birthing a human being and then figuring out how in the world to raise a human yeah. being. So um, to be able to add that into my work and to layer that, it's... It's pretty special and mm -hmm. it's it feels like something I haven't been able to do before you know so it's it's pretty cool and Cerberus writes these beautiful gooey oh. lyrics that are so rich in emotion and and I'm sure all of that just is easy for you to sort of dig into oh my god I mean Cerebrellas is a goddess she's I mean she and she has such a gift with writing music and I mean, she's not a mom, but like the songs yeah. that she writes for this woman who gives birth to a person to a baby for the first time. I mean, I spoiler, couldn't have said it better spoiler, myself. Spoiler, spoiler alert! She I gives birth. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I I couldn't have said it better myself. The way that she writes those lyrics and and that music and it, so yeah, I mean, it's it feels luscious and mm -hmm. just just. It's everything you would hope to be mm -hmm. able to do as a, as a performer. Yeah. Of yeah. course, more notable is the fact that you are the first actress of color to get to take on this role, yeah. which uh, everyone is cheering for this fact. And yes. it is very rare that, that a show suddenly flips like that yeah. and, 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 you, and the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. It's, um, it's such a blessing. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I've, I've loved this show since it opened on Broadway and I've connected with Jenna in such a deep way and I've loved this music and everything about it that I, I just was a, a big big fan and Jenna like in the back of my mind was always a dream role of mine but I just never it never even occurred to me that I could play her it was not something that I was like one day I want to play Jenna if you had asked me what my dream role was I would never have said Jenna even though it 100% is because a dream role. as an actress who's realistic about the business, you were yeah. just the, the given is that that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of how it's been, you know. Yeah. And um, I think it's so it was so noble and and smart and important an important decision for this creative team to make mm -hmm. to to open that up because. I mean, the people that I've met at the stage door and messages on Instagram, it's, it's really touching a lot of people and it really opens up a window of opportunity for so many people. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I just, I'm excited to see what comes next, who comes next yeah. after me. Yeah, I, me too. Yeah, yeah. I, and I know that you, you mentioned that when you were in high school, 
you you went to uh, a high school with a lot of black and Latino yeah. kids. Yeah. And you and you got to do a lot of things. Like oh, you, yeah. you were charity. I was Hope I was Valentine. charity. I was charity Hope Valentine. Sweet charity. I was Catherine and Pippin. Right. And then I was um Moon in Once on the Silent. So maybe yeah. you were kind of uh, spoiled early on, and then when you oh, get yeah. in the actual in business, it oh, makes yeah. you know it's really, you think about all of those those kids who get those opportunities, and then the the opportunities are so limited once you yeah. get out into the the world of, of the business. Yeah, I mean, it's when I was a kid, I would sit in the theater watching the talented people on that stage, yeah. and it would inspire me so deeply. And I just remember you know, seeing Aida for the first time yeah. and seeing a strong black woman in that role and it I was floored. Heather Headley, correct. I didn't get to see, didn't Heather, see Heather, but I mean say? I knew her I learned to sing well, off of her voice. Album, right. I was obsessed with well, the cast album. Say? I saw Tony Braxton. Oh I saw Tony Braxton. Did, yeah. yes, yes. And then I I was thirteen I think and I loved it so much I, I bought a ticket the next day and went by myself mm -hmm. to see the show and I saw her understudy. We have to bring Aida back. Do you want to do Aida? I would do Aida. You're in? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Are there any other shows that you would love to flip that maybe aren't traditional opportunities for actresses of color that um, you, you would think like, I want to do that. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, it's not musical theater, but a, a dream of mine is Stella in Streetcar Named Desire. Ah. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. The role um, of Stella. Not role Blanche, Stella. you want to play Stella. Yeah. Okay. I mean, at least like currently. Uh-huh. Eventually we can. I'm into that. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would do Blanche down the road too, maybe, but. Is there a dream Stanley? Stella needs her Stanley. I mean, <laughs> I have some ideas. I uh, have a, I have a dream Blanche. Okay, who is your dream Blanche? Zine of Jaw from Eclipse oh, on Broadway. Oh, okay. I'm such a fan of hers, and I, I've never you know told her? her this. I've met her, and she, I don't know if she knows me, but I, I just have that dream in the back of my mind. I well, I'm glad like. we said it on camera, so let's get that Do you going. want to do it with me, Zine of <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, I, but it doesn't have to be specifically black mm -hmm. version of the show. I just think if the sisters were black, would okay. be really cool. As an actress who has been, I'm assuming, wanting to be on Broadway for a long time, going yeah. in for things for many years. Oh yeah. Have there been moments where you where you felt like you were limited? Yeah. Let's talk about sort of the struggles to get there that oh, make yeah. it more special. Well, I think you know, for me at least, I, I think that the risk factor of like taking a risk and cast someone yeah. like me. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've been down to like me and one other person very, very many times. Okay. Actually, I was down, it was me and Laura Osnes for Anything Goes on Broadway. Oh. Which was, you know, could have been oh, a cool wow. thing. But yeah, okay. I mean, she's unbelievable. So, but That's uh, interesting. Yeah, but okay. that helped create relationships probably as partially how I'm on this journey where I am now, so. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anyone that you're dying to see play Jenna? I mean, you talked about your careers about who else is gonna get to do oh, it. Oh, man. I mean, so, I just love hearing different actresses sing this score. You have a lot Couldn't of friends, too. I do. You just cast it with your phone, like just go through Why not? Yeah, let's just scroll through. I mean, I was just texting with Philippa Sue today. She'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah, let's totally. just put yeah, her. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many people I would love to see, but Philippa would be really. Philippa. She'd be amazing. Okay. Pippa. Pippa, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams. Yeah. I'm totally into it. I'll watch her do anything. I'd watch her read the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been like a waitress? What? What? Or like no. a server? Are you? I've never. I was survival more, jobs. I more talk went about? like the babysitting route. Babysitting. Yeah. Well, that's good because um, you can kind of do it privately in someone's home without exactly. like dealing with the public. Oh yeah, I've had. <laughs> crazy babysitting stories. I started when I was 12 years old. Okay. And I partnered with my best friend. We started a babysitting business. We were both 12, but because there were club. two of us, yeah, uh -huh. it was a babysitter's <laughs> club for sure. But because we were 12, we were like, we'll do it together and you can pay us this like rate of one babysitter. Oh, it's like a deal. So we literally made like $5 at the end of the night. <laughs> because you were but, hanging out with your friend. Yeah, well, we were just doing it together, and right. you know, it was our first big job, and so yeah, Rachel and I, we were you paying attention to the kids at all, or were you just hanging? Oh out yeah, we were amazing <laughs> babysitters. Okay. We were so good at our job. We would bring little kits of like things for the kids to play with, and uh -oh. we were really good at our jobs. We took a CPR class, American Red Cross, and um, we were ready. Oh. But we were twelve, so well, this is all good, good experience now. <laughs> yeah, Lucy is uh, Lucy is benefiting from all of this babysitter club nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about your husband. We gotta talk about your Let's husband. Let's talk about that. We'll be right man. back with more Nicola Robinson. <laughs> Back with Nicolette Robinson, aka Mrs. Leslie Odom Jr. Yes. Yes. How is the Tony winner, the fancy Tony winner? He's great. Yep. He's it's all happening. He's busy all the time, um, but he's he's amazing. He's the best dad, uh -huh. and he's been the most supportive husband during. Oh, I know. This I've been following. Process. I've been following on social media. He's very excited. He's it's so very sweet, sweet to watch him. So sort of go through it with you. I think, I mean, he's been waiting to be able to, like, have this opportunity to, to be the supportive husband. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Switch, swap. Um, right. And he's been fully nailing it. He's been the best. But he's great. He's working on music. He's working on films and TV. He's writing and inspirational books. He's writing inspirational books. So what did you, what did you learn yeah. from um, failing up his, yeah. his inspirational book? Is it, I mean... He's a very wise guy. He is. And very motivated guy. Yeah, so it yeah. didn't surprise me that he wrote a book like that. Yeah. Any tips that um, have helped you or? Oh, I mean, I, this is something that I say all the time and we talk about it all the time. And he talks about if you love something enough, if you put your heart towards it and you, you really just love it and you digest it and you surround yourself with it, you will get to, you'll get that thing that you love. And I believe that's kind of what happened with Waitress, mm -hmm. too. I mean, I've just loved it so much. And he's been so great about, like, keeping me lifted in this mm -hmm. whole process and keeping me grateful and, you know, focusing on all the positivity surrounding me. So it's been good to have him around. I'll keep him. All my interactions with him, he's very, he knows what he wants. Oh, he yeah. He knows how to get it. He's very, he's like one of those, I feel like if he was like, um, on Wall Street in the 80s, he would have been a billionaire. Like he would oh have like God. just, you know what I mean? He's oh, like a yeah. guy who really gets what he wants. Yeah, he's he's a Leo, and he's um, <laughs> he's <laughs> he knows what he wants, and he's very passionate, and he's got a lot of drive. Mm -hmm. It's a big portion of why I, you know, am attracted to him and yes. love him. And um, well, let's talk about the love story quickly. So you've okay. been together ten years. 10 years. Did you do anything for your 10th anniversary? No, we haven't. I mean, you know, we kind of stopped celebrating the dating anniversary and we now do the wedding anniversary, so it's been five and a half right. years of right. marriage. So, right. but yeah, 10 years 10 together. Years. That's a yeah. long time. Two actors. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great thing. And some certain yeah. acting pairs just figure that out and it and really works beautifully. Yeah. yeah. So once in this island, and I'm sure mm -hmm. From what I know of him, Billy Porter takes all the credit. Tony <laughs> yeah. winner Billy Porter yes, he takes does. all the credit that, yeah. that you two found each other, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Although, the story I heard is that, so, okay, so Billy Porter was directing Once in This Island, mm -hmm. which in you LA. had previously done in, and you were Timon Moon in high school, in high correct? School. <laughs> yes. And then um, he was doing it in LA, and mm -hmm. Leslie was his assistant director, mm -hmm. correct? And he was Billy playing... Porter is also a very talented director. Everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Les was also playing Agwe in the show. Oh, he as was well. Agwe. Okay, mm -hmm. and you came in, but but Billy actually didn't cast you no. originally. No. So I love that he's taking credit for it now because he actually didn't cast you. No, it was down to me and one other person, and um and not Laura Osnes. No, no. Crystal and Lloyd, <laughs> dear Evan Hansen's Crystal and Lloyd. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And um and I didn't get it, and Billy said to me, he was like, I I would cast you as Andrea, but I. You know, I already have the cast all, you know, figured out, but you feel more like an Andrea to me mm -hmm. in this production. And mm -hmm. um, he's like, one day we will work together. And then someone in the cast husband got very sick. Right. She had to pull out of the show. And so they kind of switch, switched roles around and called me and was like, will you come and quickly learn this as we head into tech tomorrow and, and jump into the role. And so Les was kind of responsible for helping me figure out all my blocking and stuff and so you yeah. went from Timun to Andre who's like the villain in my eyes she is the villain of that Andrea, show Andrea kind of. she, she's, she's rough to Timun yeah. yeah she is I mean <laughs> you have to you can't approach it like a villain you have to really understand where the person's coming from there's just like a there was an, a misunderstanding for sure uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah I I had the best time in that show it was so and of course met my future Husband, 
Right, so did you look over and go, Aqua is really hot. (laughs) He's a cutie. Uh Um, Kind of. It was not like a, it was not a romantic thing at first. Uh It was really just like a human connection, like, wow, I need to be around this person all the time. And then it got, we, we, during Waiting for Life, we would meet up at a certain point in backstage and we'd dance at the same place in the show. And each night it got closer and closer. Oh, and okay, okay. <laughs> he would wait for me after my solo um, towards the end of the show and wait for me in the wings and kiss me as I came off. And I heard that kiss that. got a little more and more. So was the rest of the cast all like, was Billy they had like, no what's idea. happening between Andre and Agua? <laughs> they had no idea. That was my bad Billy Porter. That was, that was a good one, actually. I can do it better if <laughs> more, more preparation. I mean, I think everybody teased us about, about how like affectionate and close we were. Um, but it was very innocent, and um, we just like stayed in touch after the show and started dating pretty soon afterwards. And we didn't know if the first date was the first date, but it ended up you being the first out. date. Yeah, we were just date. kind of like leaving it open to see whether none of us were saying it was a date, but then it for sure was a date mm-hmm. when he yeah. kissed me at the end of the night. So. Oh. Yeah. But no, I mean, the cast didn't know, and they were all like, what? I mean, I don't know if they didn't see it coming, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I love also about Leslie's ri- Les, yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, Les. 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 Yeah. What I love about his rise <laughs> is it took a, you yeah. know, his his career was a long journey to get oh, to yeah. that moment. It was not an overnight oh, yeah. moment for him. When we first started dating, I mean, we before Hamilton, we had to borrow money from my parents to make our rent in time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. just a crazy a journey. Struggling. Yeah. It's a tough business and mm-hmm. um but when he did the first workshop of the first workshop he did of Hamilton, he just knew it was something that he had to do everything he could to try and st- stay to be a part of it. And yeah, the, but the ride <laughs> the ride of Hamilton, that's probably a whole other episode of show people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um but it's But uh, if you look at the two of you 5 years ago versus yeah. the two of you now, I mean, what what would you tell people actors who are in those struggling moments yeah. and I mean it, it's definitely a lot of people that maybe never think that a moment's gonna happen and it just yeah. sort of happened for both of you in really unexpected ways yeah and even when it happens you still kind of are navigating your way through tons of things with the business and, right. and you still have to remind yourself like I'm <laughs> on this ride and it's gonna always go like this but mm-hmm. I mean I, I would tell people I, I keep saying I would tell myself from just a year ago or two years ago just hang tight just mm-hmm. be present mm-hmm. be grateful and find the joy in all these moments even like in the downtime find yep. find the beauty in like being able to you know binge watch your favorite you know show or yeah. you know really just you have to trust that this journey is made completely tailor-made for you mm-hmm. you can't compare yourself to other people's journeys and I would have told myself years ago just just trust mm-hmm. you're gonna be able to do mm-hmm. all the things you want to do and you know God willing life is very long and just stay on that journey and enjoy you know what? it you're also a good person every time I ever see you you always have the best attitude and oh, you're just thanks. like a, you know and that's important too it's important to just sort of life is more about the connections you make with people and the the experience than it is about the successes and the you know the things you have to show for it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm try I try to remind myself of that as much as I can. It can be hard, you mm-hmm. know. We all have our challenges, but do you want to act with your husband? I would love to. Do another show for the Enjoy right thing. Enjoy together again. Oh yeah, I mean. <laughs> We, we for sure want to do something. It just has to be like the right thing. There's no classic things that we could like dream cast you in right now that like maybe you guys sing in the car or. I mean, we sing certain things in the car, but just like a couple things, but I don't think we would want to do it. Like we, we sing Rent together, but that's not a show we would want to do <laughs> together. <laughs> um, and we sing random songs. We sing like. Dixie Chicks and stuff. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <There's a lot laughs> but yeah, we yeah. But I I think whatever it is, it's probably like still in the works. It needs to be written. Mm-hmm. And Billy yeah. Porter can direct it. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Because it's all be all because of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. Mm-hmm. So you're still playing Jenna and waitress, like right up to the holidays. Yeah. And then you're gonna have the holidays off. What are you guys gonna do? Family time at the holidays. Gosh, I don't know. I mean, we may go back to L.A. 
Uh -huh. That's where we're based now. We kind of go back and forth a lot, but hopefully, yeah, family time. We are always kind of waiting to see where our work takes us and yeah. where we're going to be. So we're just, you know, traveling, traveling family. Thank you so much for coming oh by. God. I'm so Aww. excited for you and so thrilled this is, all, this is all happening. I'm one of your biggest fans, so I'm Aww, so happy to be here. Thank you so here. much. Thank you. Send my love to your family. I will. Everyone, go see this one in Waitress. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.